Good evening, and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings you the law, the Constitution, and the events of the day to you each month. Tonight, myself, James Barrett, and Mark Malachowski are here to bring you three exciting subjects. What do we got tonight, Mark? Well, we have Aretha Franklin, who is the Queen of Soul, and there is a little uh, dust up over her legacy, $80 million. And then we get That's a lot of dust. <laughs> That's a lot of dust. And then David Cassidy. Uh, there's a fight between uh, a little bit of dust. <laughs> uh, his half daughter and his son, and that's over 1.7 million dollars. And then there's a property Prop 13 exclusion, and kind of what are some of the circumstances going on that? Uh, on, well, on that, that involves effect. trillions of dollars. Yeah. So when we're talking about Prop 13, but we're not going to start with that. So why don't we start with R E S P E C T? What does that mean to me, Mark? Okay, well, the Queen of Soul made uh, these great hits like Respect, Chain of Fools, Natural Woman. She earned $80 million. Oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, but now there's going to be a, f a feud between her kind of live-in guy, right, who wanted to marry her some time ago, and they were engaged. But the children said, no, 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 you're not going to. The son said, no, you can't marry her. And so they, they called off the engagement. Now... That was in 2012. Um, now that uh, there's the inheritance issue, there's a war between the sons and the uh, live in boyfriend. Okay, well, what I understand. 30, 30 years. 30 yeah, years. well, what I understand about this is that I know there's probably an argument for common law marriage, but in the state they're in, um, the worst part is okay, she's a huge star with a huge, a huge portfolio behind her. She has proprietary rights. She's won 18 Grammys. This woman, if nothing else, deserved to have an estate attorney. Well, she died in test state. No will, no trust. But in her state, the only way an intestate succession can happen is to divide between the sons. And they have to be the natural sons of the person that became deceased. And unfortunately, her husband, who was not legally her husband, is going to have a long fight to try and beat that law, which has been in place since the beginning of the state. Yeah, and I think the sons are ready to fight, and they've been kind of uh, paying attention to this the whole time. You know, apparently they fought to stop the marriage from coming. For a reason. You know, now if the marriage had come through, then uh, it would be a completely yeah. different thing. But, uh, and he may have taken half right off the top. And so, and I guess the question is, why didn't she do a will? Why didn't she do a trust? Um, we're talking about $80 million here. I think she probably could have uh, afforded a lawyer, but a lot of entertainers don't like lawyers. She's not the first. Prince, Prince no attorney. Right, and so they have, uh, you know, they get in dust-ups with the, the agents and dust-ups with the different producers, and they get a bad taste in their mouth for attorneys. And also, I think they, they maybe they think, well, I'm successful at entertainment. Maybe I can successfully handle my own paperwork. But it doesn't always work out. Support. No, in fact, uh, the problem was that Aretha Franklin was kind of an old world entertainer in the fact that she even demanded to be paid in cash instead of checks or wire transfers. She wanted all her pay before her shows in cash. And she actually kept the cash by the stage as she performed so she could keep her eye on her cash. I got to tell you, that's fairly old world there, Mark. So you got to think about who this woman was. Also, they said that she kept her finances almost completely private, private from her family, from the live-in, the, the alleged uh, common-law husband, but she didn't tell. So everybody didn't really know. They knew she had a lot of money, but they didn't know how she controlled it, what she did with it, how she stored it or saved it. And so that's actually where they feel that that's why she didn't do a will. She didn't want anyone to have a clue of what she actually had. Well, that's a, that's a good theory. Um, you know, she was very prolific, though, and she was busy doing a lot of things. All the time. And so she probably was busy doing these things, and she kind of thought, well, I'll do this later. A lot of people think, I'll get to this later, and then, you know, later never happens. Yeah. So that's uh, – but it's kind of interesting. The, the, the guy who's the uh, Detroit firefighter who's seven years old now, Willie Wilkerson, um, they've been going together for 30 years. I know. It's a long so time, So that's Mark. a long time. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, there could be a lot of 
juries or judges that would be sympathetic, sympathetic, sympathetic and say, well, 30 years, he should get part of the piece of the action here. You know, he did support her all those years. Well, you know it would be the best recommendation is get the sons together in a room and say, you got to cut this guy a little, a little bit of money from each of you and end this before it turns into the war of years. It could be five years, six years, seven years, who knows how long, fighting. And the worst part is, because the money was from an intestate succession, literally, it can be held before distribution. If the court says, we hold the money, except for a little bit of money to live on, whatever, they can hold the entire race of the estate and say, we're not going to distribute any of this until you guys work it out. Well, yeah, also, you know, you're not dealing with the trust, so the court's intimately involved. Oh, my God, it's automatic probate all over the place. And, it, you know, in, in case people aren't are really aware of this, in the olden days, you know, when you had the Rockefellers and all that, they were the only one who had trusts, right? And so they worked it out basically so everybody else but the very rich people who ran the banks, um, you know, they invented the IRS and the banks and all that kind of stuff and the Federal Reserve. But they're only we're going to tax the regular worker, the the people who ran the banks. They were they ran want to be the taxed. They're not going to be taxed, so they always had <laughs> foundations or trusts, right? And then you it's know, it's all for the good. Yeah, well, yeah, the good of their family. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, so so that was the way it ran for many years, and then they came up with this living trust, and that was more for the common folk. The common people. Yeah, and so you don't have to be a Rockefeller to have a living trust, and and the and the thing about the living trust is. There's generally, you know, about 6%, you know, say basically 35,000 out of a million that goes to the executor and 35,000 out of the million that goes to, a, a, to an attorney and that's 70,000 out of your million, which is a fair amount, you know, somewhere in that range. And there's some sliding scales, but after a million, it kind of slows down. I mean, you don't get. Oh yeah, and there and the probate, you you know about you. you I know you do a lot. Of so, but I'm Mark. just saying you can be in probate court for a long time. And see, you know why? Because the longer you're there the more percentages the attorney earns because they're, they're yeah. structured. But here's the thing. The structure is based on the value, well, you not get, the length of time. But you can get extraordinary fees, but that's about Extra it. Yeah, but it's well, about Yeah, you, have about. To, you would have to file extraordinary fees. Well, I mean, the thing is, there's, there's, huge, there's huge areas of law, just not extraordinary fees. Um, <laughs> I mean, in fact, there's probably more law on that than, on I that than probate law. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because every attorney wants to get paid for the work they do. And so, um, but I'm saying, so that's something that right off the bat, they, they, they came, came up with this living trust. And so, and generally what happens, people put their house in that trust, and that doesn't have to go through probate and get no. hung up on that. And um, so she didn't do that. So this is back in probate court, and that gives the judge a lot of discretion. Oh, boy. And uh, also... Things take a while to wind their way through the courts. They always take a long time, especially with probate, depending on the probate bar in that county well, I, where I, all this I came, up, came about. Any civil stuff now, because I think what they did, they said, well, it's a cost savings thing. We're going to fire or we're going to lay off all the clerks, right? And the clerks were really kind of the people who did all the work, kept everything running smoothly. And now they said, well, we'll do it all. Well, probate may be an exception. We're going to do electronic filing. And, of course, you've got somebody, you know, giving you exceptional service in Bombay or something. But, you know, um, it's more fouled up than it's ever been. And, uh, and so what they were trying to do, like a lot of things, like Amazon or whatever, they're trying to get rid of all the people. Well, they're trying to make it all automated. Right. And, but you know what? In the court system, you still need somebody to look at something. Well, so be, what happens is there is uh, there has to be eyes because it can't just be the computer says, it looks okay to me. It looks okay to me. There's somebody who's going to still have to look at it, and they that's why they're still going to need that no matter what happens. Well, the thing is, even if you file electronically, you still have to deliver a paper courtesy yeah, copy. Yeah, you got to do really all matter. the papers. Still got to so, go. So it's just another three layers, and so that really doesn't speed up the process. In fact, it tends to slow it down. Yeah. And so, you know, things going through, and I, and I think it's basically they – they laid off a lot of clerks. Well, you and, know, let's... And, and so and it, let, does, it does take longer what, to go what through. What I want to do, because this just happened, I think what we ought to do is revisit Aretha when they start, uh, when they start really pulling this apart. So, Mark, what's our second subject for the okay, day? Okay, then we have David Cassidy, who was David the Partridge Cassidy. family. You know, the heartthrob of the Partridge family. Partridge family. And, uh, you, you know, know child... know any of those songs? Child, child, uh, child, <laughs> child actor. And... Uh, he had a fling, and the result of that fling was a half-daughter named Katie. 
and David explicitly disinherited her in the will. Oh, that's so evil. What did Katie do to David? And, uh, and so, but Katie, well, I don't know what Katie did to David, but Katie <laughs> did change her name to Cassidy. Well, it yeah. sounds like she wanted something out of David. And so, and then she had a handwriting expert who claims that David's signature on the will, which explicitly disinherits her. You know, there's no, it's pretty plain as day that, you know, Katie gets nothing. Right? Well, you actually, Mark, you and I reviewed that paragraph. And if that paragraph was... Con it's a well-written paragraph. It's a well-written paragraph. It's not and, ambiguous. And, yeah. it's, it's not on, and there's no ambiguity here. Katie is written out of the uh, will. Yeah. And it's in capital letters yeah. in a whole line. Well, there's another sentence, like, she's written out of the will. No, she's really, really, really written She's out really of written out of the will. Because Excellent. it says one thing, and then it says, let me repeat it again. Yeah. She is not going to get a dime uh, from my will. And so everything is supposed to go to Bo, who is... Bo! His son, who's his natural born son, and I guess it's 1.7 million, which is kind of surprising because you would think he'd be richer. Well, but... you wonder about who owned the rights to his music. Yeah, but did I... he sell the rights? Yeah, who knows? I mean, you know, also he was a child actor; he might have signed some stuff without. Maybe his parents you know, looted him. Get, getting it reviewed or yeah. something like that. But o it's only 1.7 million, but it's still a fair piece of well, change. Well, okay. Here's the thing about this. But Number I mean, there one, might be some res residuals in okay, there too. Okay, there's, you never there's know. more to the sad story. The real sad story that might answer your question: Why there's only 1.7 million in assets at all, or whatever? Uh, unfortunately, David had a really severe drinking problem for about 30 years, and he wasn't really performing. He started sobering up in the last year or two. But what happened was because his best prime earning years just didn't happen. He could have magnified that that money substantially if he was out there doing the, the routes like the monkeys did and all the old show TV shows did. Everyone kept coming back and even what was it, Marianne from Gilligan's Island, they're all going back and doing stuff, right? And so they keep the generation of cash going. And he had, because he was in the Partridge family, right. with the Partridge, real Partridge family, and they were in a band and they had music, he could have been doing revivals and tours and all that stuff that would have made that estate a little larger. So I believe some of this whole issue with Katie was probably revolving as, over his alcoholism and, and whatever. Now, he died of complete organ failure. I mean, he must have been doing a lot of something because your body just doesn't shut down. He's way younger than I was when he died, so it didn't really just shut down. It was in, induced by his actions. Now, do you believe that's probably one of the reasons why him and Katie just didn't get along? Was it over his, well, his degenerated I, acts or what? Well, I think what happens when you have child actors who are very famous and it's kind of like a gift that kind of comes to them, right? And then after you're not a child anymore and they go like, we really can't use you, I think a lot of child actors have a very stressful kind of fall from grace. And like you're saying, some can reinvent themselves and come do these comebacks, but it's not like their original thing. And right. so, you know, I, like anybody thinks, okay, this is going to go on forever, and when it doesn't, you know, that's, that's tough on them, and some people can handle that stress better than others. So I don't know if you can really judge what it's like to be I, like I, all that no fame, way I can judge. famous saying... and, then, and then finally be, no, we can't use you because you've gotten old now, right? Well, actually, the, the, the stress on child actors is yeah, it's huge. way magnified compared to actors that start later. Right. And it's like the Disney kids. Look at the, if you look at the yeah, gang right. of Disney kids, Mickey Miley Mouse, Cyrus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it, uh, Alba, there's like one after another, Aro Grande, and this one, Justin Bieber. Right. Come on. A lot of them go through hell, but then they get out of that hell. Yeah. And every, the people, everyone I just named has gone through hell of all hell because there's that Disney lag where either you're going to keep going and go up or you're going to lag and you're going to go, well, I'm a Mouseketeer. But unfortunately, the Mouseketeer, do you have any dope? And so what happens next is there, if they don't continue in the process, right. then they fall by the wayside. Now, even, even the ones that did the process but had good people around them, made it like justin bieber is a classic not cl justin bieber but uh what's his name uh the the singer the the other justin uh justin timberlake right. all these guys and girls that have anyone around them that really cares they get out of that that 
deldrum because they fall into the deldrum and then they rise out of it. And when they rise out of it, that's when you continue on with your career. Now, I, my fear with a lot of the, the people from the 70s, they just dropped off and then didn't have that support network to drag them up in the 80s. Right. And, that's, and so David could have easily had that. And that could have easily created a problem with Katie. Now, Katie, on the other hand, probably has more net worth than he did. And she's been in a couple of TV shows. She's been in, I think, a movie or two. So she's been around the block a little bit. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. She did a legal name shame to Cassidy. Yeah, to Cassidy. <laughs> even though his, her mom wasn't married to him. And I think that um, she's maybe seeing this as this relationship or this associ her, maybe. So, so association is a way she can kind of spin yeah, this. you're right. And uh, even this uh, publicity, which might be bad publicity, is better than no publicity at all. And uh, where, who else has said that? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Our so, president said so, that a lot. So I would say that, you know, I, I think that this would probably, she's looking at this now, whether there was affection between them or not, um, apparently her mom and David Cassidy didn't know each other that well. Well, Sherry think, Williams, her mom, right. was actually a singer right. that David Cassidy met, and I think they, they might have performed together. Right. And they, so it was a short, very short-term relationship. It was a flick. Was Very short-term relationship, but she was a singer. Yeah, but so, I'm just saying it wasn't like they lived together or anything. I think no, it was a flame. They didn't even no. Yeah, there it was wasn't even intent. It was it was a yeah. who knows? It could have been a one-night stand. It could have been a one-year stand or a one-month. No, stand. I don't. I my from what my sources looked at, it was a fling. It was, it was like, a fling. Yeah, like a weekend or something. Jeez, a weekend in Acapulco. Yeah. So I mean, but I, I'm I'm not exact on that, but that's the way they described it. So I don't think it was like a month or two months. So. You know, wow, that's no wonder. Maybe he just mm -hmm. had no... Well, he just felt that he was kind of being put upon about this. But then he did have the child. They did have the child. So, yeah. so that's a half, but that's wait, a half child. But Mark, that's a half daughter. Why? Okay. In your mind, why would somebody make such a dramatic writing if he didn't want anything to do with this person? That's, where, that's a well, question well, mark. I mean, I think it's a classic thing where probably the, the, the half-daughter thinks she's being abandoned, right, unfairly. And, you know, he's kind of like, I didn't, I, did, I didn't marry, you know, this lady. You know, this isn't, yeah. this isn't you know, I, I want to take care of Bo. And, you know, it's a classic, uh, it's a classic dichotomy when you have, uh, you know, well, nowadays a lot of people don't get married. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, so, on that on that happy note of not getting married, we go into our third subject tonight. And what is that subject? Okay, this is Proposition Thirteen. Whoa. And what? Hail Thirteen. What Proposition Thirteen was is that, um, you know, property taxes kept going up and up and up, and people were watching the government, and they were saying that the government really didn't do a much. A bunch of greedy people. Well, they the didn't government. See, they didn't see the government doing much that they wanted the government to do anyway. That really hasn't changed much. I mean, people see the government and they go, well, I pay money to the government, and the government kind of does the opposite of what I want them to do. And the government says, well, we have guns. We do what we want, pretty much. And yeah. so that's kind of the response. Um, so, you know, in Proposition 13, there was kind of a rebellion. It was a taxpayer rebellion. And they said, no, you can't just keep raising property taxes, raising property taxes. You know, there's got to be a limit on this. And so that was kind of a big deal. And they said, well... You know, 1979, we're kind of putting the brakes on this raising of property taxes, and we're kind of going to look back at 1976 uh, assessment valuation. valuation or assessment values. And uh, so that's what happened. And uh, Well, that's the Jarvis. The yeah. And, but it really was a huge political thing now. Um, and they also said, you know, if you're going to raise taxes, you have to have two-thirds of the legislature. And because people were looking at the government and saying, like, who are these guys? You know, I mean, they're spending money on stuff that doesn't help me. And they're spending money not only on stuff that doesn't help me, but the government's actually spending my money on stuff that are contrary to my interest. Completely. Yeah, you know, and so it's like, here I'm, I'm paying somebody to hurt me. And so they went, and now there's, the, so, and ever since then, you know, there's been a huge backlash against Proposition 13 and anything Proposition 13, right? And now the government's kind of established that yeah, you got to pay us to hurt us, right? And so that's kind of the way the government works now. Is like, yeah, we you pay us, we hurt you, and that's life, you know. So, uh, but Proposition 13 is kind of hanging on by a string there, and we'll see what happens under Gavin Newsom and the new legislature. Well, let me let me add something to this. Um, 
But it was a constitutional amendment. So. Yes, but here's the thing: what 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 people aren't associating with open borders and people coming to the country that have no ownership in anything, and then they want to make them voters. Well, they want to put their little gang of children in the schools. They want to make sure the prisons are nice for uncles that go to prison. They want to make sure the welfare is there because I want free money and free housing. So here's the deal. Where's that money coming from? It's mm -hmm. got to come from the landowners, right. which has a traditional negative effect for a lot of the countries these people are coming from. Oh, the big landowner, evil man, evil man. But in our state, we have a lot of homeowners. Now, if people are going to vote more taxes to the homeowners, then those people should be landowners that are voting those taxes. And unfortunately, California is being saturated with people that don't own but want to vote taxes against the property owners. Now, Proposition 13 said the government can't keep taxing me double the tax every year with Proposition. Well, I don't know if they were doubling it, but I think they were going, close to doubling. It was, was, I, I thought it was going up five or six percent no, a year. No, well, it was, it was some. It was different. And here's the worst part: it was different in where you were. Right, right. So the state like codified that only two percent a year is your maximum increase until the home tr is transfers ownership. Right. Then it gets reassessed at the new property value based on one percent of the new property value when that person sells their home. So now, what is what do you think happens when nobody wants to sell their properties? People are clamoring. So what what do you do, Mark? Well, I think what's what what you've got is you really have Americans and then you've got foreigners, right? And right now, California is not controlled by Americans. It's controlled by... It's getting more and more no, controlled no, by foreigners. but it's controlled by foreign bankers, yeah. right? And it's not controlled by Americans anymore. And it's not looking out for American interests. And so, of course, if you're a foreigner and you don't like Americans, what are you going to do? You're going to import more, for foreigners. more foreigners who are, have uh, sympathies contrary to Americans. Contrary to American citizens, yes. So, so I mean, that's what we really have now. I mean... And, and that's it, how Proposition 13 could be overturned. Well, yeah. And, and they're looking at that. And so, Don't think they aren't drooling over this. No, no, that's a big thing. And so right now, you know, we are not really, we're basically uh, what you would say, uh, we're an occupied territory by foreign powers. We are occupied. And, in fact, uh, we're being invaded. Too. And then they're bringing in, they're taking our tax money, laundering that through different nations, <laughs> and then paying people the United Nations credit cards, right, and Israel and all this stuff, they're they're paying these people to come across to the come border. come across our border. And so, actually, American taxpayer money is getting funneled through these foundations through foreign countries that are laundering the money. They're paying people to invade us, right? And I uh, have a question. And Mark. that's our taxpayer money. I have a question. How much do you think this little caravan coming from Guatemala and Honduras costs a day? Well, I'd say... Where's the millions and millions and millions of dollars no, no, coming no, from? No, no, I mean, if you look at the black money that came into the last presidential election, right, the Hillary's election, Soros... A billion dollars No, plus. Soros put two billion through the Cayman Islands, and that was just cash, right? That's not co counting APAC and the white money, the money you see. You know, that's like a half million here and a half million. Every yeah. every senator gets a half million yeah, to well, vote the right way, right? Well, you know, a half million one way or the other. Yeah. Between friends, what's the yeah, difference? Yeah, but then, you know, they probably get 5, 10, 15 million in the block, right? And so, <laughs> you know, you know, in the, in the briefcase. So, I mean, you got you got APAC, which is a foreign nation, right? But they, they don't register with FARA. Of course they don't. And, and so that's the white money. But wait a minute. And who so, got in trouble for that? And so <laughs> nobody gets in trouble for that. <laughs> So I mean, except the, if you're a pro-Trump guy. Oh well, yeah, but I'm just saying nobody gets in trouble if you're if you're working. So, but the, if you're working for the bankers, and so you know, probably I would imagine this thing is, you know, it's in the half billion dollar range, you know, and but they're they're using United Nations credit cards, right? They're using Israel trucks and the food and all that stuff's all paid through our tax money, going back through that whole usual gang of you know, bankers and whatever, the foreign bankers who run our Federal Reserve. And, uh, it's, but it's taxpayer money. So we're paying to have the Honduras come in. But if you look at the deeper problem on that, right, there's actually 
we destabilized, our CIA destabilized Honduras and created this a few years ago, right? Because their, their guy was the Chavez, you know, he was going to be the next Chavez, right? Yeah. And so their Supreme Court says, get rid of this guy. And the Congress said, get rid of this guy, kick him out. And then our State Department goes, oh, no, no, we got to put Chavez back. So this was created by Soros there, too. So, I mean, this is a long What do you mean? George was over there, too. <laughs> no, but they, yeah, oh, he was not Oh, George, right? Yeah, so anyway. George, where is George? So anyway, Prop 13 is going to be under attack. But what it does is basically one of the main things it does, if you're doing a, a parent-child transfer, right? Thank God. You don't have to be um, assessed you know, at the increased step at, up value at, of the at, home. At, the today, at today's value, right? Yes. So it's the day, it's, it's like the 1979 assessment. So you can retain that lower property tax and keep things in the family. Um, but you got to look at the Soros people. The progressives don't like families. They hate they, that. They hate oh, Wait a minute, a family? <laughs> so that's Whoa, it. It, takes a, it takes a village. Yeah, it takes yeah, yeah. a village. So they don't want marriage. Communist they, village. They don't want families. And so this is really, you know, a real bastion to help families. And um, it, and it gets kind of complicated. Like, say, if, you're, if one sibling wants to keep the house and other siblings don't, then how do you preserve the exclusion, that kind of thing? And there's certain things with timber and there's certain commercial exceptions. But however you work it out, it's if you can, it's a good idea to try to preserve this this Prop 13. Right. But it's it's part of a, a much larger political thing going on now, where you basically have foreigners running California. They don't like Americans. They want to get rid of Americans. And they sure don't like Prop 13. And like just just like they're they're burning us out this month. They said, wow. okay, you you've got land, but you can't cut down the trees. You got to let the squirrels live, and then the whole place burns down. <laughs> And so they're actually burning. Well, they're actually burning well, us alive. Well, let me tell you, on that happy note of letting the squirrels burn to the ground uh, and in Proposition 13 burning with it, uh, we're going to say a fond farewell from Law Talk for our November special. And don't take any deep breaths out and there. And don't breathe too deeply on there. Our, our state's burning down. Yeah, it's like going, um, to, going to heck in a yeah, And by the way, where, where's George when you look who lit that match? Well, George is getting his deductions. He's getting and his deductions. Running sure. Congress and the usual stuff that George does. So he's just running the country. Uh, he's trying to bankrupt the company. Yeah, well, actually, he wants to well, undersell the dollar. Well, you know, he's making a fortune on the dollar. Well, the thing about George is he gives, you know, like I said, he doles out the black money. And you got APEC doling out the above board money. But it's a huge amount of money. I mean, we're talking billions well, and look, billions of bribes. Did you ever see how, did you see how much was spent on the.